Hello, good evening. Welcome to Kamla Television Main News to present. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. The top stories in the news tonight. Police detention of senior UCA members and journalists condemned. Zesco reverts to eight hours load shedding schedule in Lusaka. President HLMA calls for enhanced collaboration with the church. In international news, demonstrators street in protest against foreign forces in Niger. And in sports news, and uh, starts U.S. expansion. These are more stories coming up shortly after the break. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us, ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued, and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. Hello again, come to television main news in detail. Residents of Matize Chiefdom in Lundazi district of Eastern Province have expressed their dissatisfaction with the water quality at the Chijemu Health Post in the area. In an interview with Kamnet TV, one of the residents, Misozi Mwale, has also lamented about the health facility's lack of a maternity wing. You know, the residents are also calling for eco-infrastructure facilities, stating that they should not be subjected to pit latrines when urban hospitals have flushable toilets. Here's a report. Residents of Matiza Chiefdom in Lundazi District, Eastern Province, have expressed concern over some of the challenges they face at Chijemu Health Post. One of the primary complaints highlighted by the residents is the quality of water available at the Health Post, which they describe as excessively salty. This poses a significant challenge to both patients and staff, impacting their overarching standards. In addition to the water problem, the absence of a maternity wing at the healthy post has become a significant concern for expecting mothers in the community. Without a dedicated facility for child bath, pregnant women are forced to travel long distances to access proper maternity services. This room is what medical staff in this community are forced to use as the maternity ward. <laughs> In addition to these concerns, residents have drawn attention to the dilapidated state of the staff house associated with a healthy post. The substandard living condition for healthcare workers not only affects their morale, but also raises questions about the retention and recruitment of qualified personnel in the area. Meanwhile, the residents have also demanded equal infrastructure facility, stressing that they should not be subjected to using pit latrines when hospitals in urban areas have access to flushable toilets. They argue that access to proper sanitation facilities is a basic necessity and should not be compromised, especially when it comes to health care institutions. That's the Ministry of Health erecting a clinic which has a petri tree, which is promoting unhealthy behavior. So we expect government to apply similar standards. Are we saying rural people are less human? Are we saying rural people are not supposed to enjoy the benefits that come from 
government on an equal Miriam Kaimba reporting for Kamne TV News. Republican President Hagainde Hichilema has underscored the pivotal role of unity and collaboration between the government and the church in fostering national development. President Hichilema stressed that unity and love are fundamental pillars of development. The head of state reiterates the importance of partnership between these key institutions in unifying the country. The head of state said this during a Sunday Mass at Cathedral of Christ the King in Indola. Zesco Limited has reinstated an eight-hour load shedding schedule to enhance stability and predictability in power management across Lusaka. Zesco spokesperson Matongo Maumbi says the decision follows challenges identified with the previous staggered schedule, stressing the company's commitment to refining its approach to suit consumers. Mr. Maumbi said Zesco is continuously monitoring and refining the load sharing program to achieve an optimal balance between meeting customers' needs and managing the power resources efficiently. This is contained in a statement availed to Camden News by the power utility company. The opposition Socialist Party has condemned the arrest of the United Quarter Alliance members Savoy Imboela and Jackson Selavwe alongside two journalists, Rogers Meilimba and Innocent Piri of Millennium and KBN TV, following the alleged attempt to hold a rally in Kafue. In an interview with Camnet TV, Party National Youth Spokesperson Stanley Mubasa, uh, Stanley Mubasa has accused Inspector General of Police Grafa Musamba of influencing the arrest, further calling for his resignation as he is not fit to hold the position of Inspector General. Meanwhile, governance expert and human rights advocate Wesley Mianda has urged UCA to register the alliance and desist from riding on the registration of parties that form the alliance to prevent such implications. Details in this report. The opposition socialist party, SP, has described as abuse of authority the arrest of Savoy Imboila and Jackson Silavwe of the United Quacha Alliance UCA alongside two journalists following the duo's attempt to purportedly hold a rally in Kafiwe despite being denied permit to go ahead. On 13th of April 2024, police arrested UCA media chairperson Savoy Imboila and UCA communications chairperson Jackson Silavwe alongside two journalists Rogers Meilimba and Innocent Piri of Millennium and KBN TV respectively. Socialist Party has condemned the act stating that the arrest of the group on the primers that they attempted to hold a rally while just being seen filming interviews with journalists is uncalled for. SP so National Youth Spokesperson Stanley Mubasa has accused Inspector General of Police Grafeo Musamba of influencing the arrest. Mr. Mubasa has further called for Mr. Musamba's resignation as he is not fit to hold the position of Inspector General. It is not right for the police to be operating in the manner they are doing. 
And for us as Socialist Party, we condemn that in strongest terms. And we know that uh, IG Inspector General uh, Musamba is not fit to be IG of Zambia Police. We want to tell him that time for him has come to resign and go and serve at the UPND Secretariat. We think he can function better at the UPND Secretariat and not as Zambia Police Inspector General. If this continues, and I'm warning that if this continues, we'll be left with no option but to protest and defend Zambia Police. We know that there is also a lot of abuses that is going on within Zambia Police, where even the police officers themselves are being mistreated under his watch and he's calling those officers as junkies. It can only be described that Mr. Musamba himself is the biggest junkie in the Zambia police. Meanwhile, governance and human rights advocate Wesley Mianda has urged the United Quarter Alliance to desist from calling for such events until the party is registered, further cautioning the alliance against riding on the registration of the parties that form the alliance. All we are saying is, UCA members, please can you make sure that United Quacha Alliance is registered. Let it be registered and please can you stop organizing these meetings just to avoid this kind of you know, situation where we have our law enforcement agencies you know, trying to misuse their powers. We are saying no to that and we appeal to our UCA members. When we say our, we are not saying we are part and parcel of UCA, but we are all citizens. And we, are, we, we all embrace you know, this kind of you know, situation where we are talking about different political parties that should be embraced to continue providing credible checks and balances. So if we want to grow our young democracy, let's be a tolerant, let's be political tolerant, so that you know, we involve other people, we involve other political players to come on board and see how we can actually enhance you know, democracy, enhance you know, malpartism as a country. We are saddened by that. On the 10th of April 2024, Government through the Ministry of Home Affairs labeled UCA as an illegal entity as it is not registered in any form. Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security Jack Mwimbu had disclosed during a press conference that the alliance was not a pressure group or a political party, hence its non existence legally. As far as we are concerned, as a ministry that is responsible for the registration of societies in this country. OCA is an illegal entity or society established under the laws of this country. Chanda Mwango for Cabinet News in Lusaka. The ruling UPND has dispelled the Socialist Party's accusations of abducting three of its candidates in the just ended by election nominations in Kaunga, Chisanga, and Chikenge wards of Luangwa, Gwembe, and Kabompo districts, respectively. This follows accusations leveled against senior UPND members Anderson Banda and Ovia Smaliteta by Socialist Party Vice President Cosmas Musumali of the two leading the operation of Socialist Party candidate Councillor for Kaunga constituency Manea Mwale's abduction, stating that she was threatened at gunpoint, a narrative which the victim also backed up at a media briefing Friday. However, speaking at a media briefing in Lusaka Sunday, UPND Lusaka Provincial Chairperson Obvious Maliteta has described the allegations as false and malicious. Mr. Maliteta has since urged Kaunga Ward Socialist Party candidate Manea Mwale to withdraw her statement, accusing him of adapting her within 48 hours or risk facing legal action. Here's a report. The United Party for National Development, UPND, has dispelled the accusations by Socialist Party, SP, of abducting three of their candidates in the just-ended-by elections to prevent them from filing in nominations in Kaunga, Chisanga, and Chikengi wards of Luangwa, Gwembe, and Kapompo districts, respectively. On Friday, 12 April 2024, Socialist Party Vice President Cosmas Mosumali at a media briefing alleged that UPND Lusaka Provincial Chairperson and Lusaka Youth Chairperson Ovia Smaliteta and Anderson Banda led an operation aimed at abducting SP Councillor candidate for Kaunga constituents Manea Mwale, stating that she was threatened at gunpoint, a narrative which UPND's Anderson Banda strongly opposed. In solidifying the purported false accusations, 
UPND Lusaka Provincial Chairperson Obvious Mwali Teta at a media briefing in Lusaka Sunday described the accusations as false and malicious, further calling for Ms. Mwali to withdraw her statement of face legal repercussions. Mr. Mwali Teta further stated that the UPND is the Democratic Party that does not entertain any acts of violence. It was not her. If they had given her time to speak, she was not going to say those things she said. But because she was a surrounded by contaminated politicians who would believe in life. I saw them, I saw them, I saw them. So, so they told I want to say that was all lies. But the beauty about all these things is I want that girl, that little girl to prove this before the courts of law. I'll take action and I'm going to give her for eight hours to retract and apologize to me in person if she doesn't do that, I'll take her to court as a person, not as a part, so that I think people should learn, should learn to say the truth. We cannot call a press briefing based on lies. Is that what we used to do as UPND? No. no. Mr. Mwali Teta has further called on the public to not entertain remarks from the opposition of the alleged shrinking democratic space in the country, emphasizing that they are just but aimed at discrediting the efforts made by the party to restore sanity in the country. If I wanted, if I was a violent person, if you want where violence was, was peer, but I was a minister, you have forgotten that I had to resign as a minister because of corruption and violence and lawlessness. Then why should I resign where there's violence? I come where, we, where they don't write violence and bring violence. I would have remained there, make money, like my colleagues. I remember my provincial ministers who made a lot of money, make a lot of money through Mukula. I'd have remained to make money through Mukula. I said no. I resigned as a minister. I want to remind you. I left PF as a minister. I never left PF as, as, as an ordinary person. I left PF as a minister to come and start a new life, to come and show Zambia that that life which was in PF was artificial. It was doing a lot of damage to Zambian people. I came here where UPND, where there is no violence, where HH. The same day there's when he says, hold your fire. There's no violence, no cannibalism, and we all hold it. Here we are. You are even able to, to come to Wangwa. Chanda Mwango, Okamnet News in Osaka. Some stakeholders have called for the need to take reports of human rights threats reports seriously and openly to safeguarding the country's democratic credentials. Former Kasenengwa, Member of Parliament and Research Analyst Sensio Banda, says the recent revelations by the World Rights Watch that Zambia's human rights are being stifled paints a gloomy picture on the international front. Meanwhile, Opposition Patriotic Front Faction Media Director Edwin Lifuekelo alleges that the country's shrinking of human rights has been necessitated by interference by the executive through the Police Inspector General Grafa Musamba. Details in this report. Human rights are seen as inherent privileges possessed by all people simply because they are human. Zambia is party to numerous treaties that seek to promote the fundamental freedoms the world over. While Zambia has made steps in areas of human rights, such as the recent implementation of free education, the scrapping off of the law on defamation of the president, some stakeholders, such as opposition politicians, argue that while the Zambian constitution guarantees a strong framework on fundamental freedoms, Translating the rights into reality is challenging. According to the Human Rights Watch 2024 World Report, Zambia is required to improve regarding human rights in areas of restrictions on freedom of assembly, government's delay in implementing a plan to address lead contamination in Kabwe, which possesses a serious health risk to children, among others. Commenting on the report, former Kasanenga Member of Parliament and Research Analyst Sensho Banda says the recent revelations by the World Rights Watch call for collaborative efforts to address them upon analyzing the report, Mr. Banda believes if not attended to, it may affect the country's human rights profile at the international level. Much more, the enjoyment is done within the confinement of the law and the various institutions which have been put in place to ensure that there's an enjoyment of, of these rights. However, in the recent past, from the time the PNP came into government, the many institutions of governance have been affected in terms of to thrive this the human rights as it was. There's need, even with this report, I think there's need also to, 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 to introspect, reflect, and make uh, amends, and make strides towards ensuring that Zambians in 
enjoy their rights as it were. So basically, this is an indictment on the on. The but opposition patriotic front faction media director edwin lifuekelo keeps the blame on the red flags raised by the world rights watch on alleged interference by the executive through the police inspector general grafia musamba mr lifuekelo calls for the need to reflect on the country's constitutional guidelines at a point of implementation so the flag has been raised and government must take this flag seriously we have always said we have told the international community that this government of President Nakainde Chilema is bent at abusing Zambians in terms of not allowing them. You can imagine even the reason they gave uh, the political parties under UCA, who were supposed to gather in Kitwe, the reason they've given them that they cannot allow them to assemble an account that they are not registered, I think it's preposterous to say the least. Because under UPND, they never had any alliance. Nelson Zulu for Camnet News, Lusaka. Fera Area Member of Parliament Emmanuel Tembo has called on government to speed up the distribution of relief food to hunger threatened, re threatened regions in the country. In an interview, Mr. Tembo discloses that scaling up the distribution of relief food will help cushion the hunger situation in Luangwa district, alleging that the cheap Zambia National Service millimeter is inaccessible and politicized. The lawmaker explains that the commodity is fetching around 270 kwacha which makes it a challenge for most of the residents to access, access further pleading for the price to be stabilized. Details in this report. In Zambia, farming is the country's food engine that culminates into economic growth to both farmers and the country. However, 95% of crop production in Zambia is rent-fed, making small-scale farmers vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and seasonal inconsistence. On Thursday, 29 February 2024, Zambia's president, Hagainde Ilema, declared the drought induced by an El Nino as a national disaster in line with the provisions of the Disaster Management Act No. 13 of 2010, a situation which led to about 84 of the country's 116 districts being affected countrywide. Luangwa district has not been spared by this situation. As such, Fera Member of Parliament Emmanuel Tembo is calling on government to speed up the distribution of relief food to hunger-threatened regions in the country and improve the accessibility of the ZNS Millimil. Mr. Tembo says most of the agricultural fields have been affected by the droughts and animals in the area. We did right to... Uh... Uh, ZNS for purposes of uh, supplying cheap aluminium, I think that 190 for breakfast and all I expected. Uh, this maize, I mean, this aluminium has started coming in. However, the quantities are low, but uh, the supply of those products has also been hampered. One, the politicization of uh, the distribution of uh, the ZNS aluminium. Uh, the DC uh, office has you know, given this aluminium to be supplied by UPN Mikadas. Now, what has been the result is that there's been segregation, mm -hmm. and also there's been a lot of that millimeter going to Mozambique. Uh, I have a problem that, and right now I'm in the constituency just to sort out those problems. Uh, that millimeter is for Zambians, it's not for UPND, it's for everyone. So, that is a big, big problem. The drought, which was predicted last year in October by the Zambia Meteorological Department, has affected the availability of underground water in some part of the district. But fears are that by June this year, availability of water may become a crisis. So, really, uh, we have started seeing the effects of drought as, as in relation to pores, because water levels have really dropped. So, some of them are already drying up. And uh, one in Makoko there is a problem. Uh, others, fortunately, are still you know, running, but uh, I think by June we may have started to experience water problems. So uh, there will be pressure on those points that have water. Uh, because if three, four other boreholes are not working, the one which is working will attract more people going there, but also it will increase distances that people are moving to land access. Nelson Zulu for Camnet News. This, this is Camden Television Main News. We we'll take our first commercial break. Join us for more news shortly after the break. Are you looking for a reliable and efficient courier company with international standards? Then let UBZ Courier, your trusted partner in swift and secure deliveries, be your ultimate choice. Whether it's a small package or a hefty consignment, UBZ Courier handles it all locally and internationally. 
our modern call center ensures personalized attention for every client. For seamless deliveries within Zambia and beyond, trust UBZ Courier. Call us now on plus 260-763-062-680 or visit us at plot number 15, Mwapona Road, Woodland, Lusaka, Zambia. UBZ Kuvia, a world-class brand that can be trusted. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mush, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that meal that brings family together, top chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So, embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. This impending drought, it's time we look to alternatives of sustaining our crops. We as ISDP are promoting irrigation and water harvesting as the solution to challenges posed by climate change. Watch our 13-week series as we unfold the solutions for our crops. Catch us every Monday at 2040 hours, repeats every Tuesday at 1910. Welcome back. We'll continue with the news. The Zambia National Education Coalition, ZANEC, is calling for consistent audits to be undertaken in schools to provide a clear picture of how funds are utilized. Reacting to an audit sample of 182 schools countrywide by the Ministry of Finance and National Planning on utilization of school grants from January 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023, Coalition Executive Director George Hamasonga has urged the Ministry of Education and Finance to ensure those alleged to have been involved in the plundering of school resources are brought to book. In a statement last week, the ministry indicated that 182 sampled schools were funded about uh, 80.5 million kwacha for the period under review, where elements of abuse amounting, amounted to 13.4 million kwacha, whilst those relating to management failure totaled 62.9 million kwacha, accounting for 17 and 78 percent of the total funding, respectively. As Zambia National Education Coalition, we are very disappointed, actually, with the findings of the audit that has come from the Minister of Finance that is uh, showing that um, our schools are misappropriating the school grant that is going to schools. It is unfortunate, and what we want to say, especially at the Minister of Finance, is that they need to be doing this exercise on annual basis, and they need also to ensure that um, all the officers that were involved in misappropriating uh, you know, the funding to schools are held to account. But we also want to call upon the Ministry actually, of Education to ensure that um, they continue to provide oversight on what is happening in the schools so that um, they can ensure prudent management uh, of the funds that are sent to the schools. Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, CSPR, has embarked on the fiscal budget tracking review for 2023 in Northwestern Province. CSPR Provincial Coordinator Natasha Walia says the activity will be carried out at both provincial and district levels with eight sectors earmarked to be reviewed. Ms. Walia says the organization is carrying out a similar activity in five other provinces across the country. Zanis reports that Ms. Walia said this when she paid a courtesy call on Northwestern Province Permanent Secretary Grandson Katambi in Solwezi District today. Ms. Wale has appealed to the Permanent Secretary to accord the team full support 
to enable them to, access, to successfully carry out the activity in the selected sites. The she disclosed that CSPR is working with various stakeholders under the project called Fighting Social Economic Inequality. Minister of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development Charles Milopi has called for quality works in the construction and rehabilitation of public infrastructure such as roads across the country. Mr. Milupi says government wants to see quality works on roads, bridges and other infrastructure projects it is implementing in various sectors across the country and not shoddy works. Zanis reports that the minister said this today when he called on Maninga District Commissioner Brenda Mukwakwa and Area Member of Parliament Robert Lihefo. Mr. Milupi said it is President Hagainde Hichilema's desire through the Ministry of Infrastructure to ensure the acceleration of infrastructure development in all parts of the country to enhance service delivery to the people. Mr. Milupi said the government will ensure Northwestern Province is not left behind in terms of development due to the tremendous support it has continued to receive from the people. He has since urged the provincial and district administration leadership to inspect government projects that are under construction and rehabilitation to ensure the delivery of quality projects. And the Manyinga Member of Parliament, who is also Provincial Minister Robert Liefo, said the people of Manyinga are grateful to President Hagainde Hichilema for fulfilling his promise of completing the construction of the modern civic center with two high-cost houses. This is Kamala Television Main News. We'll take a second break. We'll be back with international sports news. Zambia, are you ready? Zambia Youth Conference 2024 is here with Archbishop Dr. Bernard and Mrs. Bibiana Nwaka under the theme Raising the Next Generation of Priests and Kings. From the 17th to the 21st of April 2024, speakers, Apostle Dr. Francis Pius, Bishop Robinson Fondong, and others, and ministering in music, Ephraim, son of Africa. Time from the 17th to the 19th of April from 4 p.m. On the 20th of April from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On the 21st of April from 9 a.m. at Living Water Global Church in Kitwe, Zambia, near Usakile, roundabout behind Puma Pumping Station. Come and become a history maker. Enjoy the benefits of an instant loan with us ranging from 1,000 kwacha to 750,000 kwacha paid express once collateral is viewed, valued and verified. Call us on 0763-595-359 or 0779-432-993. Classified Financial Express, here as your financial friend. Welcome back. And now in foreign news, hundreds of demonstrators took part in a protest against the presence of foreign forces in Niger, including the armed forces of the United States, which has a military base in the north of the country. The demonstrators gathered in the center of the capital city of Niamey at the core of civil society organizations close to Niger's ruling military junta, whose members took part in the demonstration. The demo comes as the West African nation pulls away from close cooperation with the United States in counter-terrorism efforts, turning instead to Russia for security. Until recently, Washington considered Niger a key partner and ally in a region swept by coups in recent years, investing millions of dollars in an airbase in a desert area that served as the heart of American counterinsurgency operations in Africa's sub-Saharan region known as the Sahel. Here's a roundup of international news for more. Hundreds of demonstrators took part in a protest against the presence of foreign forces in Niger, including the armed forces of the United States, which has a military base in the north of the country. The demonstrators gathered on Saturday in the center of the capital, Niamey, at the call of civil society organizations close to Niger's ruling military junta. We have called for the departure of the Americans and all foreign forces from Niger. 
and the junta has taken our concerns into account. We've come to support and reaffirm our support for the CNSP in relation to the decision taken. I do not think we should be the victims of these threats, and if this continues today, it means we have to reshuffle the cards. We're going to question certain agreements because if the agreement doesn't benefit the people of Niger, I think we have to break it and suspend it. The demo comes as the West African nation pulls away from close cooperation with the U.S. in counterterrorism efforts, turning instead to Russia for security. Russians will be here as part of a win-win cooperation, whereas the Americans, as we've seen, have been here for how many years? Well, as insecurity weakened. I'd say not, whereas with Russians, we've just recently seen that things are moving forward. Niger's ruling military council, known as the CNSP, has yet to order American troops out, but the arrival of Russian forces makes it complicated for the U.S. forces to remain in the country. The electoral campaign for Togo's legislative and regional elections has kicked off. The Alliance Nationale pour le Changement, one of the opposition parties, launched its campaign with great fanfare on Saturday with a caravan roaming through the streets of Lomé. The campaign is taking place against the backdrop of protest over the government's constitutional change. We are here with serenity because we know that we are going to fight them. We would not let an adept of the permanent power grab impose his vision on us. For the forces Democratic Republican, FDR, another opposition party, the question of changing the country's constitution is a major issue at stake in these elections. We want to hold a sanctioned vote so that whatever they do in the ballot box, we're going to beat them to say that strength lies with the people. Meanwhile, supporters of the ruling UNIR party also took to the streets of Lomé after crisscrossing several roads of the Togolese capital. They all converged at a meeting point to listen to their leaders. The challenge is simple, to confirm the confidence and support of the Togolese people in everything that we are doing, but at the same time to say to the Togolese people we will listen to them and we will act to improve and accelerate everything we've done so far. More than 2,000 candidates and independents are vying for 113 seats as MPs and 179 seats as regional councillors in the elections that will take place on April 29. Noël Tadignon à Lomé pour Africa News. Iran late on Saturday launched several attack drones towards Israel. Tehran media confirmed the attack, saying the significant drone and missile operation was a retaliation for Israel's deadly attack on Iran's embassy in Syria on April 1. The Israeli military admitted the attack Sunday, saying that 99% of the more than 300 projectiles fired at Israel by Iran were intercepted with help from Israel's allies. We appreciate the U.S. standing by Israel's side as well as the support of Great Britain, France and many other countries. I have set a clear principle, whoever strikes us, we will strike them. This is the first time Tehran has directly attacked Israel after years of waging proxy wars with its affiliates, including Hezbollah and Hamas. Iran has warned that it will respond with more force if Israel retaliates over this weekend strike. And in our sports news tonight, Copper Queen's captain Barbara Banda has arrived in the United States to begin her career with National Women's Soccer League Club Orlando Pride. Association of Zambians in Florida President Francis Combe led the Zambian diaspora at the airport in songs and dances uh, when welcoming the star player. Clad in Zambian colors and the purple Orlando Pride colors, the Orlando airport was full of songs and dances. Fresh from the Copper Queens team that beat Morocco to qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics, Barbara was all smiles as she joined the supporters and the Zambian community. Zambia Kuchalo, a division of Nostalgia Solutions, led Zambians and supporters of Orlando Pride soccer team in welcoming the former Shanghai Sheng Li striker. Barbara became the second Zambian female footballer to sign for a U.S. club after compatriot Rachel Kundananji, who plays for Bay FC. 
to end camera television main news. The top stories once again. Police detention of senior UCA members and journalists condemned. Zesco reverts to eight-hour load shedding schedule in Lusaka. President Hichilema calls for enhanced collaboration with the church. In international news, demonstrators take to the street in protest against foreign forces in Niger. And in sports news, Barbara Banda starts U.S. expedition. Our common verse of the day is coming from the book of Luke 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Thank you for watching Covenant Television Menus. Good night.